In January 2005, I first shared my story with this congregation, coming out to you all. When Linda asked me to share today, I was honoured. My journey of faith really began when I entered a high school, knowing no one. My locker partner Elizabeth and I talked from time to time. She sensed how lonely I was and invited me to go caroling with the Christian Fellowship. Reluctantly, I did, and I met students who immediately welcomed me. I felt I belonged. It didn't matter to them what or even if I believed. A few months later, we were gifted with tickets to a Billy Graham movie. I was excited. Being on welfare, I hadn't been to a movie for a long time. A time to run was about being alone, then finding home in God, and spoke to me. I went to the front of that theater, and with a little prayer, began my journey of faith. I didn't fully understand it, but my slow and halting journey into God's grace began. I began to learn and grow in my faith, while becoming aware there was something different about me something I needed to hide. Even those good souls who welcomed me would say things that revealed I wouldn't be welcome anymore if I stopped hiding, even as they changed my life with their welcome. During my teens, my parents had separated and divorced. My brother left to live with my dad. My mom became an alcoholic. That little group helped me keep a grip. I tried several churches, increasingly aware there was something deeply wrong with me. I was different. I couldn't even name it. Eventually, I understood I was gay. So many Sundays, I heard about those horrible, sinful people who refused to obey God's law. I heard how much better the world would be if people like me were gone. They said this to my face, not knowing. I was invisible. I couldn't tell them what I was going through. I heard I would burn in hell forever if I acted on my feelings, and emotionally I was falling apart. Completely alone, I could hardly bear it. Those few I told said it was okay to be gay, but I must not act on it. They'd say trite things like God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. With a horrible sense of dread, I believed God was demanding I spend the rest of my life alone. When I finally told my mom, she said she always knew. She had sensed it all my life, but wasn't sure how to open that conversation. I realize now that there was no choice in this for me. I was growing into who I was, though at the time I was so conflicted, at one point I tried to commit suicide. My pastor referred me to a Christian counselor. In many ways it helped, but after two years I told him I had made a pass of my roommate and was told I wasn't trying hard enough. Find a new counselor. He eventually referred me to Foothills Hospital for aversion therapy. Instead, once there, my new counselor began to work with me on my emotional wounds and tried leading me towards accepting myself. I rarely went to church anymore. It only intensified my pain. People like me were an abomination and didn't belong there anyways. I feared the rejection if I was found out. There were bright spots, and I found a couple of friends I could talk to. My deepest experience of God didn't match the condemnation and rejection I felt I deserved. The grace I had no right to claim was somehow still a part of my faith experience. My spiritual life was very confusing and often didn't seem worth it. I was always afraid to tell people about me, my dirty secret. I lived in constant dread of being rejected by people I considered friends. At 24 years old, I had still never met another gay person. I grieved the realization my sexual orientation wasn't going to change and the loss of my dreams, like having a family of my own. Even with friends, I felt so alone, I battled deep depression. My counselor suggested I talk to someone with a similar struggle in their life and introduce me to a patient of his, a closeted minister. We sat and talked. Somehow he understood everything I had experienced, and we talked about God. He challenged me with a new idea. What if I was created to be exactly who I was? Not hated by God, 
but an expression of God's creation? What if acceptance was offered to everyone because we were all in the same boat, not condemned by our sin, but blessed by God our Creator? What if faith wasn't about changing, but accepting ourselves as unique expressions of God's creation and growing? I discovered God had been waiting for this moment. I could finally hear that still small voice and stop hating myself. I began to get on with the business of living the life God gave me, asking God to be part of it. I found a God who hoped the best for me. As that wise pastor had asked me, what if you are exactly who God created you to be? I began a long and winding journey to a new understanding of who I was, as I came to believe that. I wasn't broken. I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Not a mistake, but a unique creation. Twice now I have been forced to leave churches because of who I am. The first time I was emotionally destroyed, but that led me to Metropolitan Community Church, a denomination started by a gay pastor thrown out of his church when he came out. God truly came alive for me. In God's love, I discovered a new meaning for grace as my life transformed into gospel. The second time, I began going to little community church with a friend one Sunday after MCC had closed. They handed out instructions on how to contact your MLA and Member of Parliament to protest legalizing same-sex marriage, an abomination of the holy gift by God to a man and a woman. I wrote void on my offering check, added a little note that I didn't feel good giving to a church that distributed hate literature in their bulletin. A few days later, confronted by the elders, I found a new confidence. I told them I would not go home and break up with my partner of eight years. Rather, I was walking out of this place and would never return. I told them it was their loss, not mine. I had come full circle. I was exactly who God had created me to be, and I would not apologize any longer. A few weeks later, I came to Robert McClure after my friend called David and was assured that he would never let something like that happen here. One of the core reasons we have a process of becoming affirming congregations is because we need to decide together we will not use threats of expulsion to blackmail people into changing who they are. We decided, to welcome, we decided that welcome is more important than judgment. We believe this is what God hopes for us. I have had opportunities to offer others an insight into a God who fearfully and wonderfully made us all. God could even take my pain and use it to help others. 2,000 years ago, Jesus showed us grace, the very heart of God. 35 years ago, grace lifted me up. It was time to stop feeling broken and afraid and begin living my life as a gift from God. In this community, I celebrate that I can be myself and know I will never be kicked out. Do you have any idea what a special gift that is? Thank you.